The PBA Cheetah Championship made up the first 20 of the 60 qualifying games at World Series of Bowling 14, with 120 players trying to qualify for the stepladder finals in three animal pattern events and the overall PBA World Championship. It's just going to be patience this week for me. Uh, six, I'm looking at 60 games. I'm looking at the World Championship. So if I make an individual show, that's great. That's icing on the cake. But we're going for that World Championship. So if I have a bad game here or there, you know, if I have a bad game, game four today, I'm going to be like, well, there's 56 more of these. So try to stay patient, try to make the least amount of mistakes as possible as I can. And hopefully after the 60 games, we're somewhere up top. Nine players from five different countries averaged 240 or better in the first five game round of qualifying, including a familiar name near the top of the Cheetah leaderboards, McCune. Kevin McCune, son of two-time Cheetah champion Eugene McCune, was third after round one. Obviously I'm not doing what my dad did and throwing it Mach 2 uh, up to, so uh, I'm just trying to stay composed and make sure I throw good shots and hopefully have the same type of ball reaction I did earlier. You just hit the pocket and hopefully all 10 pins fall. Just ahead of McCune was Martin Larson, who averaged better than 248. Well, there's two things. You got, I got to bowl as good, and then I got to be open-minded to see if the lanes play the same, or if I got to do something else. That's one of the really hard things when you have a really good block, and the lanes might play a little different, uh, to, uh, to be wide enough and then look outside the box and see if it's, uh, we got to change something, or we can just keep doing what we did this morning. Leading everyone into round two was two-time PBA Tour champion Sean Maldonado, rolling plus 257 and averaging more than 251. He didn't want to stop after five games. I say let's keep the scoring pace going. I mean, uh, the first two games were I caught some good breaks and, uh, you know, of course, took advantage of them and uh, just kept rolling. I'm gonna stay with what I got. If uh, if I see something different, I'll make some changes. Maybe talk to my ball reps if, if something I can't figure out. But other than that, yeah, I'm just gonna stay with the same game plan and go from there. Making sure anyone who hadn't heard yet knew he was the leader, Maldonado opened round two with a perfect game. By the end of the round, though, Maldonado would drop to third, although he stayed ahead of several players surging through round two. A huge plus 267 block, 10 pins better than Maldonado's opening round, by Packy Hanrahan got Hanrahan to fourth, just four pins behind Maldonado after 10 games. Pontus Anderson moved into fifth, and A.J. Johnson jumped to sixth with a big help from his 300 in game nine. Passing Maldonado and taking the second spot was 2022 PBA Rookie of the Year Santu Tahavanainen. The leader at the halfway point of the Cheetah Championship, Joseph Grandin, who went 273 over on his second five game block. Lurking, ever lurking, after 10 games was the man in 11th, E.J. Tackett. The three-time champion in 2023 rolled two 279 games in the final three games of the block to remind everyone he was indeed still there. As round three began and developed, Tackett stopped lurking and went straight into contending. Tackett finished the round at 556 over in third place, 14 pins away from second. The man in second was another lurker turned contender, B.J. Moore. With three of his five games 258 or better, Moore moved up from seventh after two rounds to second after three and looked like there was no way to stop him. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, really. I um, feel like I'm throwing it pretty good, and whenever you throw it pretty good, it's easier to get a read for what needs to happen. So. As long as I don't get too out of whack, then really it's just making sure I just keep my tempo, keep my pace.
But here comes Belmo, as the kids say. A plus 259 block left him in sixth after 15 games, which he admitted was a new experience for him at the World Series. I'm actually a little bit paranoid about how the rest of the World Series is going to go because usually I'm in a mindset of catch up uh, and usually it's hundreds of pins that I'm trying to catch. I'm extremely like that fighter in me just comes out and now that I've had a, a decent start, uh, I've got to somehow manifest that same approach for the rest of the, for the event. But look, honestly, once you, uh, you look left and you look right and you see everyone starting to throw strikes, you, uh, you get that feeling pretty quick. Sweden's James Blomgren moved into fourth with Hanrahan dropping one round to round spot to fifth. The game plan was a little different than last night where I tried to hook a little bit. It was a little harder and straighter today, but uh, mentally the game plan is going to be the same to see how many good shots I can make, see how focused I can be, and just really have fun bowling. A rough round for Maldonado dropped him to ninth as Tahavanainen also struggled, dropping from second to seventh. A.J. Johnson fell two spots to eighth, but was feeling good about his chances going into the final round. Game plan's been really great so far. Uh, just need to take advantage of some of the, some of the pairs when they give them to me. And uh, uh, this block this morning uh, didn't end very well. And um, it's just going to make me want to go after it a little harder and a little bit more aggressive tonight. And uh, um, just show up when I need to and, and stick to the game plan and just, uh, just control everything that I can control. Four 300 games were shot in round three, but none by contenders. Anthony Lavery Spar was perfect in his penultimate game of the round. Two players shot 300 in the ultimate game, Brandon Runk and Michael Davidson. Kyle Troop opened the round with perfection, but was realistic about his chances after the round. I've got 45 games left to bowl. I'm trying to just keep moving myself up in the overall. Uh, I guess it would probably take another 300 or, you know, maybe a game with like nothing under 240, you know, which seems I've always got a 190 in there somewhere. So trying to just clean it up a little bit tonight and just uh, hopefully continue the momentum from this morning. 15 games of bowling in and five to play before the top five advanced to the Sepp Ladder Finals and the leader was still Joseph Granen, averaging 238.67. Well, normally I am a scoreboard watcher and I probably will like glance at it and stuff, but uh, I'm gonna do my best not to. A little more talk about lurking. Jacob Buttriff was 22nd after round three. I feel like I just put a lot of pressure on myself yesterday and this morning I just kind of went all out and I just kind of just stayed with my even my even keel, and uh, honestly, if I just keep the same thing going tonight, then uh, I'm gonna try to give it a run for the show. Anthony Simonson, who hasn't finished lower than 10th all season, was 25th. Look, this is Sean Maldonado's ball. Look at the size of those finger holes. <laughs> like. Can you, get a, can you get a they pinky go in, in there? there? Yeah, I don't even go in there. I don't they know. They go in there, by I, the way. They I, go in there. He's acting like he's big or something. My son <laughs> has bigger finger holes. <laughs> get out of here. Neither Buttriff nor Simonson would lurk for much longer. Simonson started the final round with 279, then 300. Buttriff was perfect in game three. As was EJ Tackett. Four other players, Trevor Roberts, J.R. Raymond, Pete Burgos, and Carlos Granados, also rolled perfect games in the final round, but none of those four would threaten to make the Cheetah show.
Tackett locked himself into second place by the end of the round, trailing only B.J. Moore. A lot of good players, you know, everyone everyone got there for a reason, so I don't, uh, I don't take anything for granted. Just do what I can and hopefully the outcome comes my way. The short patterns are always kind of like that, where you, you have to get it, get it close to the edge. And um, unfortunately for me, it, it went in several times. Uh, I was talking to somebody, I, I think I threw in the gutter maybe six or eight times in, in the 20 games, so it's not a, not a very good percentage, but um, I, I struck a bunch when, when my ball did stay on the lane, so uh, that, that's how we got here. Whenever you bowl well or whenever you're physically bowling well, it's easier to see the shapes and you know you don't really, when everything's in tune and not out of control, it's, it's just a lot easier to, to manage. So I, was, I feel like I was able to manage those was a little bit better. The ultimate goal is the World Championships. Obviously making the show here and being in second place is a, is a great added bonus and a great start to the week, but the ultimate goal is the World Championships. Worlds is always a bigger picture, so um, you know it, it's great to be the number one seed. I'm glad I started off well. Um, you know it's always always nice to start off your a very long week, you know, like like I did. So uh, very happy with it, and I hope that you know, these next couple patterns treat me just as good. Grandin dropped to third, but qualified for his first national TV finals and second step ladder finals of the season. I've never done it before at a PBA level, so I don't even know what to say. It's pretty sick, honestly. <laughs> Fighting for the last two spots, Buttruff, Johnson, Blomgren, Hanrahan, Simonson, and Belmonte. I think any time that you bowl out here, you've got to be prepared to change that game plan uh, immediately and so we'll uh, we'll see how the lanes are, are transitioning typically the night blocks get a little more funkier than the morning blocks so uh, everyone out here is probably going to be a little bit more aware about that transition especially games two three uh, and then hopefully game four five they uh, they open up and we can throw some big numbers if we need to buttress 300 255 265 finish put him into the fourth seed I was just thinking about stuff way too much the, the first 10 games and I, I just got frustrated. I kind of toned myself out and I just let every single bad break get in my head and I think today I just went in with a strategy. It's like, you know what, just go up, throw the shot, come back. If you leave a split, if you leave a spare, just go up, shoot the shot and then come back and treat it like a new frame and I think uh, today was... Uh, I didn't have to shoot too many second second balls today, so I think that kind of paid off to where I'm at right now. Blomgren finished with 223 and sat tenuously in fifth. While always a risk on the cheetah pattern, a gutter ball by Belmonte at an inopportune time ended his run. Two tenth frame nine pins stood in the way of two more players. First, Hanrahan. Next, Simonson. Simonson finished eighth, making him nine for nine in top 10 finishes in 2023. Only one player was left with a chance at Blomgren's fifth spot, A.J. Johnson, who needed three strikes in the 10th to tie Blomgren. I wasn't a fan of that lane because I missed a couple times on it, and um, and so I said I'm just I'm going to commit to this, and I'm giving her all she's got, and uh, and I threw three, you know, pretty good ones that, in a in a tough house, fortunately carried. Uh, so that seems to be the common trend. The, the carry is pretty tough in this building.
Johnson needed two strikes and eight in the 10th frame to advance. Anything less than Blomgren would make his first show. I just kept telling myself to execute and keep throwing better shots because, you know, you never know what will happen. And, um, yeah, you know, the unfortunate break and then um, and then to have a chance and to, to step up and throw them all. That, that was the good lane. Um, I, kept, I kept doing the same thing I was doing, and, and the picture was pretty clear. And I knew that if I got it going right on that lane that it would catch and, and keep coming. Um, and, yeah, those – I mean, I don't think uh, – that second one that I needed was was pretty damn good. That was that was good. These five would compete a week later on FS1, but not before they and the rest of the field bowled 40 more qualifying games, starting with the 20 that make up the Scorpion Championship. Next on the World Series of Bowling Chronicles on the PBA YouTube channel. <laughs>